Hi guys, welcome into the ESL live stream. Yeah, this days like that where nothing is going well. A uh, little bit laying, of course, because yeah, you know, communications not really good. Working on a VPN in here, but thank you for being in here. Whatever, if you are on Facebook, on YouTube, and trying as well on Twitch, awesome. That's great. So today it's a Q and A. You are very welcome to leave me your question, and I'll try to help you with your class. That's the ESL live stream, and it's right now. Michael ESL live now on YouTube. Welcome on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Frankly, um, li uh, StreamYard is really awesome for that. You can stream on different platform, and that's really good. So people who are used to Twitch, I know that some teachers are gamers. So if you want to join from Twitch, now you can. I have, be I have this Twitch account since two years now. Uh, but I never really use it. I used to play sometimes uh, games when I had time back in the day. But now, no, I don't have time for playing games because I'm busy with sharing some tips and help you as much as I can with uh, your class. So welcome if you're watching the replay. Thank you so much for being here, and let's see a little hello to the people in the house. Uh, here we go, Janice, uh, finally I know who you are, and it's Frenzy. Frenzy is one of the members of Mike ESL um, WeChat group. You know that you can reach me on WeChat and we're going to find that WeChat is this, this one. Yes, if you want to reach me on WeChat, there's no problem. And we have an awesome group over there where you can, uh, if you need resources, whatever their PDF and all the stuff, you can go on this, you can add me on WeChat and I will add you to the group, which is all about teaching resources. Thank you, Frenzy. She's an awesome member, uh, really helping out. And yeah, she'll be helping uh, uh, as much as I can with resources. Thank you so much for being in the live, Frenzy. And of course, ESL teacher Michelle, welcome. Every time I have a live, she's pretty much always here. Thank you very much for being here. And yeah, uh, if you have some question, you can ask uh, online. If you need online tips, there's no problem. She's here to help. And you know as well that you can be in the live with me. Last time we did it with um, Andy, the ESL guy, uh, as well with, uh, it happened as well with Sandra, the... Um, the language lady, so you will see appearing in the chat, uh, it's called a link, so you can click on the link, it's very easy, and you will be, get ready some headphones so that you can, be, uh, it won't create some laggings or bad sounds and all stuff, so you can be with me into the live. Thank you, you, yeah. Thank you, Michelle, for being in the live. Let's see. Let's say a little hello. Here we got Nikita. Thank you for, for being here. Mohammed. Hi, Mike. Welcome, handsome boy. Yeah. <laughs> we got pretty girls and handsome boy, and they are all teachers from all around the world. That's awesome. Thank you very much for being in the live. I love you. Uh, if you got question, it's a QA. and a so yeah, just think about your question. Don't forget to mention question and then write your question so that I can know it's a question.
question that you want to ask me if there's many people talking in the chat so that I can see right away that you are asking me a question and sorry if I miss some questions from you you know it's not always easy we are only together for one hour so yeah uh, thank you as well yep, 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 yep. sorry yeah that was frenzy what is Twitch? Twitch, it's more a gaming platform where you do live streaming. It's live streaming, but mostly for gamers. And you know that some people from Twitch start to come to YouTube to do some live streaming, gamers especially, and uh, as well, some YouTubers start to have some online uh online lives like this whatever nothing to deal about games except esl games for your class for sure so yeah pretty much it's a live stream platform mostly the most famous uh, for gamers thanks for the question that was uh yeah hi mike how can we take sensory activity <laughs> online class please help me i'm a great fan of yours sensory activity what do you mean uh teaching like the five sense for example smelling uh touching um you know what when you are online it's really good to have a little puppet with you it would change uh, a lot of things if you are using a puppet you can try to use this puppet and say oh you touch that puppet okay you, i touch it you know i touch my face all right i touch my nose touch 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 uh, so you gotta work with tpr of course for smelling you can bring some real food and <sighs> Ah, smells good, you know, doing actions and trying to bring uh, as much real stuff as possible because you have that much space to teach English. And believe me, it's not really easy, of course. So, yeah, uh, for five cents, even for listening, you can do those actions. It's uh, I made a video about it, uh, about how to do TPR actions. Thank you, Wilma Silva, back in the game. Hi, Mike. Uh, thank you for your lives. It's a real pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm happy to see you here. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And a very old subscriber in the house, uh, sitting in seven if I don't make mistakes <laughs> welcome hello Mike keep safe and this heat wave uh, actually in Xi'an we are it's not that hot it's raining uh, most part of the time uh, I've never seen in 20 years I've been in Xi'an I've never seen this kind of temperature it's not even the temperature is more this kind of weather which is really dry uh, really wet xian used to be always very very dry a uh, very uh, dry weather yeah and we easily reach 42 degrees celsius and uh, these days we are always around 35 uh, but it's raining mostly and it's the atmosphere is really heavy so we feel like yeah it's not the weather from it's not we are deep in the in the center of china we are quite very far from the coast around 2000 kilometers from the coast so and uh, this weather is not uh, what we're supposed to have in here so it's Mm, it's not really cool it's just really hot and wet which is completely the opposite of the weather we supposed to have in here thank you for being in the live 
thanks you are really an awesome teacher and personality thank you so much uh thank you thanks for your good words everybody uh oops yeah my love you you mean uh, i'm one of the witch app group member thank you yeah sometimes it's difficult to know that you because your youtube name is different from your witch app name so don't get angry if I don't remember your name on WeChat or on YouTube. I'm getting a little bit lost. Gabriela, good morning from Mexico. Thank you, Gabriela. Bienvenido en el grupo en el canal de MySomiSL. Mucho gusto y viva México. I love Mexico. I used to be a tour guide for a Mexican uh, folk uh, group uh, back in 2000. Uh, I had good memories. I had a Mexican girlfriend at that time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, who's in the house? Oh, we got someone who wants to come in the live. Thank you. Yeah, it will be good. If you want to come with me, uh, that's Engana Ana. Uh, if you want to come with me, you got to put some earbuds. That will be better. Some earphones will be great. Question. My school opened a TV channel. Oh, yeah, I remember that question. I was requested to talk every week for 30 minutes and asked to talk to any topic I want. Which do you suggest me? I guess, you know, if you are in a school and uh, you're going to start a, a TV channel, um, would be I, I wanted to do that as well in my school but I didn't even the, have that time but especially an English channel I don't know if it's specialized on English channel but that's what you can do uh, you can do uh, why not if kids So just go with what they really like. Uh, uh, for example, can be English, can be art, can be music, and even even is not only English art or music. You can just make your TV channel only in English and try. Even you can have the kids prepare something, uh, prepare some words they want to say or a question you want to ask them. Prepare before you shoot. And then you, that's what you can do. Do you like uh, English topic? What do you? Why do you like English? For example, or what's your favorite musical instrument? Your and you know you can ask many questions like that for a TV channel. It can be a, there are many topics that you can talk about, but make sure that are topics that kids love. And uh, yeah, uh, hope the, the, t the teachers from different subjects can also participate in this uh, channel, in this TV. Thanks a lot, Saren, for being here every day. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> Hello, we got someone who wants to come. Hello. I'm gonna ask her if she's got a camera because I can see her, but she's got no she's got no camera. So uh, would be good if everybody can see you. But uh, it doesn't matter if you want to say something. People also can hear you if you don't want to show yourself. You can say something till you have a microphone. Uh, for example, I just hide my camera, but you can still hear me. All right, baby. Keep on rolling. Okay, so we are ready. <laughs> Hi, Mike. What's the best way to teach a five years old English? TPR, best method ever. Sorry, I'm. I gotta do. I wanted to say something. Yeah. Okay. To someone who's talking to me in private. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So, um, yeah, what I was saying, the best method, using TPR, using being really active, smiling, uh, using flashcards or real or real objects, whatever you're teaching. Uh, so, yeah, you got to be really active, get a kind of lesson plan, not really a lesson plan, but a, a structure starting from warm-up, presentation, uh, practice, pr production, uh, and wrap-up. Of course, you got to play games. It can be in the practice or it can be in your production as well. You can use it uh, pretty much any time. But starting with a game can be can get the kids really excited and difficult to control. So avoid playing uh, a game, especially if this game is going to uh, at the really beginning of your class. Of course, you get some warm-up that to make them feel like, yeah, I'm ready to learn English. But games can be can be a warm-up game, very, very simple one for sure. But yeah, make sure that you still keep the control. Thank you very much, and a half for uh, being in here. Thanks a lot, Mike, for your answer. That was much help. I'd love to help you more. Uh, I get a lot of people here uh, asking. Uh, you can check my channel. You got everything pretty much to help you and have a basic good class. If you're, uh, Anna, if your camera doesn't work, it doesn't matter, but we can hear you. That would be cool. Uh, I'm going to try in a, in a moment. We're going to try. Whatever. It's all good. Uh, you guys can do it as well. You will see uh, what's going to happen when you join with me in the live. If you can be in front of everybody just like me. Uh, sorry, young brother, young and old. Uh, great to be with you on your live stream. That's great as well to see you in here. Really appreciate you. Thank you very much, young. Uh, welcome in the live again. Thank you, brother. Hope you're doing good. Uh, hi, what an is what interesting games do you recommend with flashcards for toddlers from two to four years old? If you are teaching to two to four years old kids, you get some, uh, uh, especially two years old, they, they're going to be very shy and a little bit uh, afraid of you. So what you can do is um, if you have, yeah, for example, Let's see that this is uh, a flashcard, for example. So uh, when you when you are teaching what's on the flashcards, for example, I don't know, for example, bear, that's a teddy bear or a bear, um, you can hold the flashcards like this. Choose one of the students to come. You get to show them before you, you ask them to play. So you can uh, show them with your uh, TA. So what you can do is very simple game, but kids love it. And the ones who are shy, who are scared, they will be suddenly, oh, yeah, I want to play. So, uh, for example, you just have to tell them that trying to use your hand and hit the card is difficult to show you like this, but... Um, you can try, let them try to hit the card. They get a say at the same time. For example, bear. And then you try to uh, uh, not let them hit the card easily, right? And say, bear, 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 bear. Wow, good job. You can change by using a nose. For example, you say, bear. They can use their nose, try to hit the card. And that can be really funny. Uh, so they go run around running around around you yeah for sure so they can go bear 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 good job uh they can you can also uh hold the card like that up in the in the air and ask them to jump and say bear and for the kids who have uh who are shy to say bear, bear, you can just put the card higher and say Speak loudly, say bear loudly, and the card will, will, and the card will just go a little bit down. So when they jump, they can hit the card. 
what else? Yeah, they can use their elbow to hit the card. Say, bear, bear, bear. Yeah, it's tough to get a little bit dangerous sometimes when you get the elbow, but it's one by one. You kid, you ask them to come in front and play with you. And yeah, uh, this is a very simple game that kids, believe me, love. Thank you very much uh, for your question. Right, so it's a Q&A. Yeah, that was Omar. I uh, can't tell you what is your name. A little bit difficult for me to read Russian. All right, thanks anyway. Uh, for Okay, so Anna left. Uh, we won't be able to talk with her. Yeah, I wanted to... Um, recommend as well uh, a channel for you uh, what what oh man I forgot the name it's uh, from uh, a teacher here in China ESL teacher he just oh yeah I remember funky I guess you you know him funky English English, I guess, yeah, we can find it probably. Yes, he's as well teaching in China. He just joined that uh, our ESL uh, family. If you are a teacher teaching, you just started, uh, you just started um, a channel in China. So you, you're welcome to, to come and uh, be part of the big ESL family, uh, just like uh, I forgot. We get like uh, the language lady, uh, Mooncake English with Gemma. We get Andy, the ESL guy, Stu from Tefl Lemon. So yeah, just feel free to come. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen, and we're gonna be watching one of the videos. So it's a Q and A. Don't forget to. Don't forget to leave me your question, whatever you want to ask. Uh, leave me your question, and we gonna go. Okay, that's Vika. Thank you, Vika. Here we go. Share our screen, and we are gonna check out. He's. It's gonna be a game. Here we go. Let's find. So you can see Funky English. He's got 181 subscribers. So yeah, just go to his channel. You get games to. He's got good games to share. And we're going to be watching one of them. Here we go. I'm going to try to put it from the beginning if it works. Apparently, the. Back to funky English. And Here we go. Another great PowerPoint game, stick or twist. Students will first ask and they, they will then win some money. They will then have a choice if they want to stick or twist. When they twist, they might win some more money or they might win some less money and something silly like a stinky sock. Okay, let's check out the game. Okay, guys, this is the stick or twist game. First of all, you want to split your class into teams. Then on our first page, we have lots of different types of transport. You're going to get your students to make a sentence. Maybe, for example, uh, it can be a funny sentence. On Mondays, I usually have a choice if they want to stick or twist. When they twist, they might win some more money or they might win some less money and something silly like a stinky sock. OK, let's check out the game. Okay, guys, this is the stick or twist game. First of all, you want to split your class into teams. Then on our first page, we have lots of different types of transport. You're going to get your students to make a sentence. Maybe, for example, uh, it can be a funny sentence. On Mondays, I usually take a pirate ship to the supermarket. Uh, let's take a look. Inside, we have a question. Where is this river taxi? Okay, so we know the answer, it's Thailand. And then we have won $90. We then have the choice if we want to stick or do we want to twist. Mm, okay, let me think about it. I think I'm gonna twist. So let's take a look. Whoa! Uh, so I've won a Lamborghini and $700.
So in this instance, it was a very good decision to twist. Okay, so then the next team, uh, okay, mm, on Tuesdays, I usually take a plane to the moon. And let's take a look. Inside the question, it says, this car uses gas, electricity, or coal. Okay, it's a Tesla, so mm, of course, it uses electricity. Oh, $200. This time, I'm unsure. But okay, I'm still going to twist. Let's take a look. It's less than $200, but still not bad. I've got three donuts and $50. Okay, it's the next team. Uh, okay, on Wednesdays, I usually take a train to KFC. Uh, let's take a look. In this instance, the students have to describe the picture. You can decide based on their level. Maybe you'll tell them uh, they have to use five sentences or maybe if they're younger students, perhaps one or two sentences. Okay, so in this instance, we did a good job. Let's see how much money have we won. Okay, $60. Hmm, I think it's not so good. So I am going to decide to twist. Let's take a look. Oh, not bad. I've won a drone and... $900. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Uh, on Fridays, I usually take a hot air balloon to my grandmother's house. Describe this picture. Okay, so we have a, a train going inside a cargo plane. It's actually the world's largest cargo plane. Uh, okay, oh, $500. It's a tricky one. It's a lot of money. Um, I think I should probably stick, but uh, just for fun, let's twist. Let's take a look. Oh, no. So I've won a horrible hamburger and $50. Okay, guys, I'm not going to show you all of them, but uh, we do have some funny answers in there. I hope this is an interesting game that you can use in your class. Even if you aren't teaching transport, maybe you can use it in some other classes. Don't forget to download the PPT in the link below. And if you like this video and found it useful, please like. And if you're new here, please subscribe for more great games. Stay funky, guys. with the sound thank you i hope you were able mike okay yeah thank you to um, uh how our brother his name is you gotta Robin. know you gotta go. okay <laughs> yeah he's really cool he's really funny uh let me get the oh someone already subscribed that's awesome thank you very much uh you can go into I'm going to give you his link. You can go to his channel, get awesome stuff, whatever. Oh, you were watching everything I was doing, huh? Yeah. That's cool, huh? The StreamYard is really awesome. <clears throat> For people who don't have Mac, especially. And, uh, yeah, it's really simple to use. You get the link into the description down below if you want to have that StreamYard, if you want to stream as well. Uh, there's no problem. You can stream just like me. Uh, and why not coming with me? So, yeah, uh, you know that we have, uh, let me stop sharing. Thank you. And you can come into the live with me right now, just like right now. Many of you do not understand how it works, but it's working and you just have to click on the link that I'm going to send you right now. The link before was from the channel, from Robin Funky English channel. Make sure to subscribe. And um, he is really awesome guy. And yes, if you want to come into the live with me, if probably, why not? I'm, I'm not sure if he's around, but yeah, uh, he can be coming uh, anytime you can be with me into the live sit in 87 what are you doing to those kids that just don't listen to you or things or things on purpose I'm very smart short person I can be like all scary to towards those yeah um, you know you have to learn sometimes how to do that you know, that sad face, you know. 
you're not good. Well, of course, you're going to scare some of them, especially the kind of things that may, can be scary. But um, in a class, sometimes when I don't have TAs, because my TA, since I point at the kids who is not doing well, my TA will go to him or her and say, hey, you be good, you listen to the teacher, right? But in some schools, sometimes you can be alone. And when it happens to me as well, and when I'm alone with 55 kids, what I do when there are kids that are really, really not listening, can't do anything about it, I'm just going to uh, be having a very, uh, a very bad face, a really angry face, and going to him and say, all right, now you stand up. And then my tone is really up. And I'm as well very scary. So uh, because those kids they are not even afraid of you. When you're like this, they are even smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not scared of you. So uh, it's very important to... Yeah, to... To do that, set. When you are talking about kids, you know, who are making noise, yeah, I got those kids at home too. Oh, man. But no, what I do, I ask them to stand up in the class, in the middle of the class. They will stand up and, yeah, when the teacher will come back, she'll be like, oh, man. She'll be like, oh, she knows that the ones who are standing were really uh, bad. So if you get TAs, it's really important to work with your teacher assistant. And hello, Mike. Nice to see you. Thank you very much, uh, Huang and Green, for being in here. Uh, thank you so much. Welcome. Mike, would you help me indicating a site or activities for kids with attention deficit disorder? Woo! No idea. <laughs> I tell you the truth. I've never searched for that kind of uh, website. Uh, sorry, I can't really help you with that, but yeah, you know, and those students doesn't mean that they, they are, when they are very naughty like that is just because, you know, when you are in a class of 55 kids, it's, it's really difficult to keep their attention and you don't have, you, you can't use different ways of teaching because you are. You have lots of things to do, so uh, it's very important to be um, to try to understand your students, of course, be patient as well. But uh, it's really difficult in the class of 55 kids because this is not really education, you know. Uh, but when you are in a few number of students classroom you have to change your teaching method change your way to teach and you will see which one will where you have better results in, in those so it's a matter of changing your your, your method sometimes uh, sometimes when kids are um, uh, disturbing the class when you have some naughty kids it's not because of them. It's pretty much because of your, because of yourself, because of your teaching method, the way you teach, make them boring. Of course, you will have some others will be like very interesting, uh, and you have some of them who look like interesting, but they will never raise their hand. You know, they're too shy. So you got to be really active in your class and. Uh, it must be a very engaging class. And here is Down Jenny, is my dear Down. I hope you're doing good. Uh, just popping and working in the studio with my husband. Have an awesome day, evening from New York. Right, so me and friends. 
I'll watch the replay later. Miss you here. Thank you, Down. Uh, get busy. That's great to know that you're in a studio and uh, can't wait. A new song from yourself. Uh, yeah. We are on holiday right here, summer holiday in China. Uh, so everything is doing is pretty fine. Hope uh, you guys doing better over there. Thanks for passing by, popping in, and saying a little hello. Thank you, Down. Really awesome to have you here. Great. So, uh, if you get more questions, get very welcome to to ask. I'll try to answer. And as you can see here, we have. Uh, yeah, you can join me using this, um, uh, what is it called? Link, <laughs> losing my, uh, my words. Yeah. And, uh, so you can just click on the link. It's going to be easy. You just have to follow the, the process. They're going to ask you if you are using uh, Facebook or YouTube, they're going to ask you your YouTube account or, uh, Facebook account and you just have to get ready a microphone and uh, headphones and you'll be good to go so if uh, uh, when you join I will see you right away on my screen so just feel free to join thank you guys uh, so yeah it's a Q&A so feel free to ask me any question you need uh, we're going to share another game for those who do not know all that ESL family. A game from uh, the language lady who is also a newcomer into that family. Let me see if I got the game. Yes, must be that one. I'm not sure. I know that she's... Uh, okay... Boop, 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 boop. That must be this one. I'm not sure. Boom, 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 boom. Here we go. Are you a teacher who's frustrated when you get the looks of students that look like this? Whenever you're trying to implement an activity that involves asking and answering a question with a partner, look no further and just know that you're not alone because I have had this happen to me many, many times. One of the things that I like my students to do is to learn how to ask a question and then have their partner answer a question and vice versa, particularly using academic vocabulary that they have learned in class. Well, I have started using this activity to teach them to do that and they love it and they beg to do it time and time again because all it involves is a pack of Uno flashcards and a board where they can see sentence stems. Stay tuned so that you can learn how to incorporate this game in your classroom tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in and I want to welcome you if you're new to the Language Lady community. My name is Dr. Hempel and I post a weekly video on tips and strategies for teachers who teach English language learners. If you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, you will be notified every week when I post a new video. Also, any games or activities or resources that I mention in this video will be included in the description below. So the name of this really fun game, only using a pack of UNO cards, is called Who Wants? And I'm actually going to link it below in the description so that you can see what materials that you need, which, like I said, it's just the cards and you're going to need a board to post certain um, items that I will go into in a minute. And that's it. And your students will be able to play. I recommend that this be played in a small group, no more than six, maybe up to seven students, but probably no more than that. And we played this last week, so I'll go ahead and without further ado, show you how this game is played. So as I mentioned, the name of this game is called Who Wants? And the simple goal is to teach students how to speak in a question using want and also answering I do or I don't. The cards that are going to be used are all the number cards excluding zero. So you'll have about a total of 72 cards. You can include the wild special card and the wild draw for special card. To set up the game, you want to have a, on the board, write the numbers 1 through 9 in list form. 
Next to the numbers, you're going to write common nouns. For example, one will be a car, two is piano in this case. But you can also use more sophisticated academic vocabulary words and even content-specific vocabulary words. Next, you're going to write the four colors that correspond to the UNO cards, and next to them, you're going to write the adjectives. In this case, blue was big, green long, red hot, and yellow expensive. After you have ensured that you do not have the number zero in that deck of cards, you're going to shuffle them, and then you're going to deal seven cards to each student, and after you have dealt those cards, the rest of the cards will go face down in the middle of the table. Students will look at the cards and lay down exact pairs. The pairs need to be a number and color. Students will choose one of their cards and ask the other students in general if someone wants the card. For example, student A will choose a green two and ask who wants a long piano. If a student wants the card to complete a pair, they will respond by saying I do and the asking student will give them the card. Students cannot take a card if it doesn't complete a pair. If no student wants the card in question, the asking student draws a card from the pile. The student with the most pairs at the end of the activity is the winner. I would make sure that you practice along with your students ahead of time to make sure that they can pronounce all the words and they know what the words mean within context so that the game will be played fluidly and will be a lot more fun for them to play. And that's how the UNO game is played. I really hope you enjoyed it. My students really enjoyed having me record them so that you can implement this game in your classroom. Please let us know in the comment section below how it went. And also, if you use UNO for other activities to get your students listening, speaking, reading, and writing. As always, uh, tune in next week and I will be posting a new video of tips and strategies for to use in your classroom. Thank you and see you next week. Bye-bye. That was the language the language lady sandra thank you so much she's awesome really it's a real pleasure to see her beautiful shiny smile thank you for helping the teacher uh <clears throat> the big community that we are now helping with you in your class and very soon i'll be able to train you uh and go deeper into the tips with Mindsome Online Teaching. I'm going to show you a very short introduction. Very soon is going to be, I always say very soon, yeah, because it takes time and I really want to do things properly and uh, understandable for you so that you can just go poof in your class. Thank you so much uh, to the language lady hello mike please can you recommend the best teaching app except zoom yes thank you faithful belly kiss um you can use uh, an awesome app called uh <laughs> called what <laughs> that's mike you know yeah yeah you know i forgot i forgot all the time here it is, class in. Yeah, that's the app that I'm not going to show you because you can't see it. Class in has been uh, an app that I've recommend since the very first day of the pandemic here in China. When we, after the Chinese New Year, when we were asked to stay at home without going to school. So many schools started to find some apps and you have that app called class in i'm gonna I, I don't have the the link right in here but uh, i can uh send you the name it's class in but with a big i yes in like in the class class in yeah you can go and check it out it looks like a bird yeah I, i'm gonna show you a little bit the uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Yeah, that's the one with the, oops, here, the one with the bird here. It's called Classin. 
Yeah, you can see I got tons of apps on my phone. Yeah. Useful that I use once in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not that a mess, but I use tons of apps. And this is one of them that I love. Uh, I should show you um, this app used by, uh, what's his name? Mushi is doing awesome with this with this app uh class in <clears throat> really good app and you get apps like ding 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 talk <laughs> also that we use a lot in china uh you all have qq but you have very few english I, i've never tried the you have qq international and uh i'm not sure if it's working as well for this one Uh, here we go. Hi, Mike. Do you have any ideas how to stretch the class without being bored? Because I have one hour and a half and the school teacher plan only four words a day. What? What? <laughs> yeah, so, some are uh, a myth. No, this is not right. All depends how old are your kids. But one hour and a half, four words. How about sentences, key sentences, uh, practice real situation like dialogues as, as the kids who come in front and practice the dialogue uh, would be great. And of course, you got to be, um, let them play games with those flashcards. Uh, get tons of flashcard games on Mike so me so I can just check it out in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, on, on my channel, and yeah, uh, really difficult to tell you like that, but yeah, you gotta be really active and boom, boom, boom. It's a tempo. Even if you have one hour and a half, I guess it's not gonna be one hour and a half in a row because it's too long. Uh, at least you gotta stop at forty minutes, forty-five minutes break of 10 minutes and then go for another 40 minutes because kids they can't i don't know how old are your students by the way but even from from 3 to 12 it, it, it's far too long one hour and a half no you can't you can't do that thanks a lot brother uh hello lena charming woman in the house thanks for your advice very welcome really appreciate you thanks for being in here how i teach the students with COVID 19 and i fear of share cards uh how i teach the students with COVID 19 and i fear of the card i'm not i, I don't really get it well what, what do you mean how do you how you want to teach COVID nineteen? What do you want to teach? Um, word uh, stuff about how to wash their hands, things like that would be cool. Uh, or probably, uh, I fear of share cards. Or ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. I get it. Uh, don't need to share cards. Mm, you can play some games like I used to play when the kids know the cards, like four cards. You can, uh, you can, it's difficult to say. Um, if you get two cards like this, two flashcards like this, you can, after you've been practiced, oops. One flashcard fell down. Yeah. So when you practice, after you've been practicing so that they can say it, you can just try to let them uh, do a little bit like uh, like this, you know, scroll slowly. And let's see who's the first kid to guess. And you can give him some points. Very easy ones. Or you can, uh, it's, it's really difficult. Yeah, I can understand. Uh, COVID-19, you get to have a kind of distance. And you can play some games like uh, using PPT, you know, PPT games on the board. So, um, 
if you have a, a spinning wheel, you can ask them to spin the wheel. Uh, oh, yeah, I could share my... Well, uh, yeah, what I was saying is like you can have that PPT uh, games and... You know, you, on this PPT, I mean on your screen, you can have like a wheel like that. Of course, it's on, on a PPT and this wheel uh, can turn. And when the students stop, so you can stop the wheel, the wheel will stop uh, naturally and they can get some points uh, according to their question. It's difficult to explain to you, but there are tons of great PPT games that you can use in your class without a need to the students to come in front or touch anything uh, with their hands. That's quite, yeah, quite a good question, huh? But yeah. Thank you very much, Lena, for your question. Uh, uh, like, like she was saying, exactly, uh, Frenzy. Great. Thanks for helping out again. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Ding Talk, Ding Talk. Hello, Mike. Thank you for being in the live. Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess I have uh, an example. Oh, no, that's not that game. But yeah, um, I know that Mushi, we're going to go and see on Mushi's channel so that you can see because I. I've never been, uh, I've been teaching online, but very few. Mushi uh, ESL games. And uh, I'm going to go into his, uh, I'm going to show you uh, an, this app that I was calling Class In. And it's a really awesome app that you can use in your class. Uh, let me see. Okay. Online ESL game. Okay. Oh, this one is so long. Let me check out some short warns. Ram up. Yes. Yeah. He's got really, yeah. Okay. We're going to go with that one. He's got some awesome games uh, about uh, online teaching using this app. Uh, online teaching using this app called Classin that I really love and apparently now is getting a little bit more uh, easy to access and that's great because this is a very great engaging app uh, let me show you a little bit uh, with our friend and partner of Minds on ESL Mushi ESL really mushy esl world please here we go let's up 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 here it is online english game so here we go a game for you with mushy hello and welcome to mushy's esl world today i'm going to present a very simple game for your offline and online classes you can also use this game for your one-on-one -on -one face to face class. This game is suitable for all the ages and any content you teach, like numbers, colors, shapes, sight words, CVCs, letters, etc., or even the vocabulary. First of all, if you have simple cups without any design, then you can write down the words or numbers. And the other way is you can also simply print out those words and you can fix on the cups here, right? But if you are working from home and you got some cups with design, you cannot write anything like letters, numbers, and you don't have the facility to print out the words and or the pictures and fix it. You can also do a simple way. You can take a simple paper and cover the cups. So it's very simple. You can hide the design with the paper. Then you can write down the letters, numbers, CVCs, whatever you teach. Here we have a little pig, but you can also take a ball or coin, whatever you have. Okay, so this is how you can prepare the game and how it works in the class, how you make it more funny, more interesting, and more productive. 
Let's watch the video. We have a very nice game here. Is, is this a monkey? Uh, is this a what what what? Is this a is this a what what man? What's this? Box short says that it box wonderful everybody. It box. Chicky monkey, chicky monkey, chicky Lena. Chicky monkey, chicky monkey, chicky Lena. Chicky monkey, chicky monkey, chicky Lena. Your turn. Tell me, where is the pig? W. Lena says W. 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 Ah Yes, you got it right. It was just there. Wonderful. You got it right. Ding ding, wanna try? Ding ding, your turn. Here is the little pig, and the little pig is hiding under a cup. And buddy, cheeky monkey, cheeky monkey, cheeky ding ding. Cheeky monkey, cheeky monkey, cheeky ding ding. Cheeky monkey, cheeky monkey, cheeky ding ding. Where is the pig? Huh? Pam, pam, pam. Uh oh. Cheeky monkey, cheeky monkey, cheeky ding ding. Wow, you got it right. He was hiding under the cup here, right? Three, four, five. Here's the ball. Here's the ball. Is there is there a school in your town? Is there a school in your town? Is there a school in your town? Yes, there is. Yeah. You also got it. You guys are brilliant. So that was mushy. You can see that platform is really, really awesome to use uh, for you in in your class. Uh, class in really awesome. Here I'm checking out a little bit <laughs> to say hello to newcomers in the house. Yo, Irene. Wong, hi Mike, first time watching your live. How you teach kids who know nothing about English? I'm Chinese. Sometimes I really can't help myself to explain in Chinese, of course. Especially when uh, you have, I know that you are a Chinese teacher. I know my Chinese teacher, there are more, there are far more busy than us foreign uh, teachers, except that we have a lot more classes that's for sure but you guys gotta stay in the office always having uh <clears throat> to do office hours a lot so uh very singular uh, uh hi mike uh iron wong hi mike yeah so what you were saying it was knowing nothing about english how you teach kids who knows nothing about English? Uh, when they know nothing about English, you gotta go step by step. And using TPR, you know, total physical response. So that by using, uh, it's just mimicking. Yeah, and doing those actions for them to guess. You gotta be very active in the class, very smiley. Uh, have uh, material like flashcards and all that stuff. Um, uh, you can start with some warm ups. Uh, my teachers in my class, they are doing the warm ups I I'm doing in a classroom, uh, whatever, peel banana and all that stuff. It all depends on how old are your kids. Of course, when they get older, you can go with the cookie jar. Uh, which is really, really funny. But when you start with kids who are uh, young, who never learn uh, English, you can just let them follow you, you know? When you do uh, actions or whatever you say, they just, yeah, follow me. And don't forget to have a rewarding method on your board so that you can give them point and encourage them to speak. And to say, to open their mouth 
so it's very important. There are lots of things to, to say. And yeah, uh, for sure, I'll be training you very soon on Mike's home uh, online courses. And what is it going to be about? Uh, I'm going to show you very quickly in, in here uh, what is going to be happening on those online courses where I will be training you uh, to be uh, a good teacher. And yeah, if you're really good, it can be even great. So here we go. Hi Check guys, it out. Hi I'm Mike from Mindsome Mike Online Courses. If you are here, it's probably because you want to make the job of an ESL teacher your career. Or if you're already an English teacher, you really want to make a step forward into the career of an English teacher. Or you... Well, we're going to stop here. Apparently, it's not going well. So, yeah, uh, those online courses is, is going to be where I'm going to take you from the very beginning till... The first day you're going to enter your class, wherever you are, Chinese teachers really fit for you. It doesn't mean that it's, of course, for foreigners who want to come to China and teach, but it, it can be as well. You will have different courses according to different topic. For example, warm-up topics or demo class, how to succeed in your demo class. Or even for those who are still back home and really want to come to China, I'll present you the ESL market in the world and choose the country where you want to go. It doesn't mean you have to come to China, but of course I'm here and I can help you. And I have uh, also some uh, companies with me uh, that you can really trust. I'm working with them in partnership. There are uh, governmental companies and they're doing really great. Uh, so yeah there's no problem for you to find a job in china till the school wants you you're good to go and they're gonna care about everything your visa and all stuff even if you're already a teacher in china you want to change your you want to change you want to go to another province yeah, uh, i get all those uh, relations and they are not only relations but partners with Mike Somia Cell. So really serious partners, not guys like is gonna lead you into somewhere you don't even know about it. And I'll teach you uh, many stuff, how to succeed in your demo class, even how to succeed in your ESL job interview, whatever it's on Skype, and you got to know that with WeChat today, many uh, Chinese hunters uh, hunting for teachers use uh, what they want from you is a short video from yourself. And I've seen tons of them. And yeah, uh, frankly, there are so many apps on the market that can help you make in like, you're going to spend, if you're on not really good at using apps and uh, how to figure it out or how it works it's gonna you're gonna spend probably 30 minutes or one hour to do a, a, a two minute video but was gonna that's gonna change uh, everything and it's gonna make you look like professional and yeah the school will be willing to employ you because you gotta know that on the on this market now in china everybody is using wechat and you can see my wechat here if you want to add me on wechat and have all those little tips and yes with wechat is in china everybody is working with wechat and uh, sometimes you know you are in another province but you really want to work in another province and you can just send a simple two minutes self-introduction video, but where you can add stuff that never, ever, I've never seen on uh, video introduction and today, self-intro, and then today it's really easy to do, believe me. You got all the tools uh, and you're going to show to the school that you're creating and they, they're going to love it.
Thank you so much. New subscribers in here. Alisa, thank you for being in here. Alisa Navarro, welcome. A uh, new subscriber here. Have you ever taught students who are age of 12 to 15? Do you have any tips on how to handle the class with them? Yeah, I've been teaching kids to 12 to 15. They're not my favorite, but um, yeah, I've been teaching to them. And uh, I even been teaching to universities as well during two years. And I loved it because you can speak, actually. You don't need to be so much like doing actions all the time like a monkey and all stuff because those guys can speak a little bit of English. They understand already. But yeah, it's really interesting because you get to speak a little bit more about cultural background, especially us foreigners. Uh, so it's it's really interesting. Uh, how to handle them don't have much problem handling them because they are they can be naughty at the beginning of the class but uh, I always have you always have a teacher assistant who's gonna come into the class and uh, start to talk to them for five minutes to calm them down and then you can go and teach your class but yeah there are even if they are 12 to 15 years old uh, it doesn't mean that they don't like to play games. You can do some games, of course, who are a little bit more interesting. That's for sure, where they have to talk a little bit more, but it's still the same. Always ask them to come in front and talk. Could you please share some melodies I made some minutes ago? How do they... Uh, yeah, those melodies, yeah, it's just what I remember when I was a kid. It was like, bo, bo, uh, what was that? Uh, <laughs> well, that's when I show the car slowly, and kids love it, of course. Um, uh, yeah, there are others that I've never introduced on YouTube. But yeah, uh, I can do so. Uh, some of them are really easy. Thank you, Bezame. Why not do that? Uh, easy, easy games with even sometimes when you're doing some strange sound like this, kids just gonna be like, <clears throat> look at you. What? What is it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. they love it. You know, and they're laughing, and that's the point. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Uh, yes, it's a free app. Classin is a free app. Thank you so much. Thanks, Iron, for being in the live. I thought that you were my colleague for a minute because I, I have a, a colleague called Iron, but uh, she knows me very well. I've been working with her three years as a teacher assistant. She's really awesome. And Chinese teacher, English teacher. Thank you so much, guys, for being in the live. We're going to stop for here today. Uh, the next live was going to happen uh, very soon on Mike Somi. It's going to be uh, Sunday night. We're going to be probably having uh, a live with the language lady and... Uh, Robin from Funky English they will be in the live with me, so don't miss it. It's going to be Sunday, 9 p.m. CST. CST means Chinese uh, time. <laughs> I forgot the S. Uh, standard, I guess it must be, yeah, uh, Chinese standard time, the normal time, Asian time, Beijing time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you can see that it's 10, 12, uh, here tell, yeah, 10 past 12 here in China. Uh, and it will start at 9 PM in China. So you can just make the difference, but you are used to it. Thank you so much again, guys, for being in the live is going to be all for today. 
See you Sunday, 9 p.m. Don't miss it. If you get questions, the live will be about how to start your class. If it doesn't change, this is going to be like that. How to start your class, warm-up, songs, and all stuff is going to be big time Sunday night, a special live with the ESL Power family, and you are all that family as well. And just welcome for this uh, live on Sunday night. Thank you so much, guys. And I hope to see you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe if you were new in here today. And I'll see you very soon. Happy teaching. See you guys. Bye. Thank you. You're awesome. Really appreciate you guys. Thanks.